Hello, my most pious of followers, and welcome back to the Celestial Perch. Today, I have an updated basic build video. This one will be an update to the first video I ever did, uh, mainly because that video does not have great audio quality, as well as the video could use a little bit of fine tuning. Uh, I'm also working on right now the next Shroud Covenant video. That should hopefully be out here uh, probably tomorrow sometime, or maybe Wednesday. And then also in the background, I've been working on the next segment of the new player guide. Uh, trying to work with 3.6, so there's been a, a little bit of delay for that one, just simply because I'm trying to do some testing with 3.6. But without further ado, let's jump into the build. So looking at the Han Tribunal overall, I'm going to try to go through this sort of quickly that we can jump right into the video. But for this build, we take Oligarchic. This will give us some extra faction unity gain. And seeing that we're running Spiritualist Empires, it can be relatively easy to appease the Spiritualist faction if we try to, and they will make up a vast majority of our population. So getting extra unity gain from them will just help propel our unity in the early to mid game. Speaking of unity, the Exalted Priesthood will net us base unity on our priests, as well as replace some of our politicians with high priests. High priests are just a better version of politicians, and having base unity is actually better than percent modifiers, as this base unity is affected by our percent modifiers. So having stuff like meritocracy, spiritualist, and traditional thrown in there, all giving us 10% towards our unity, either directly or indirectly will make for some just better priests and better unity production throughout the game. As mentioned before, meritocracy. One of the main reasons why we take oligarchic is we get access to meritocracy. Having specialist pop resource output is very nice, as this tends to be some of the more important resource output. We get stuff like alloys, consumer goods, unity, and tech, all from our specialists. So having extra 10% on top of that will just help our early, mid, and late game economy. Meritocracy really has no downside, and the leader level cap itself is uh, relatively minor, but can come in handy. Authoritarian, Xenophobe, and Spiritualist are all of our ethics. Starting with Authoritarian, we get the Stratified Economy Living Standards. Definitely powerful, one of the best living standards in the game. Will help reduce our consumer goods consumption, and just in general, having fewer jobs on consumer goods means more jobs on alloys, unity, and tech. As well as the monthly influence and worker pop resource output, the influence will help us expand, and the worker pop resource output will help our early game uh, just kind of basic uh, worker economy, being food, energy, and minerals, which will help us expand and set up some prosperous uh, colonies. Xenophobe. Although it gives us decreased opinion for other empire species and makes it harder to make friends, that doesn't really matter because the empire modifiers are very, very good. Starbase influence cost will help us expand early, maybe snagging some extra mega structures if we find them, valuable choke points, or just planets. And the pop growth speed will just help us net extra pops in the early game. And early game benefits are better than mid to late game benefits. So having some extra pops in the early game means a stronger economy, which means a stronger snowball. Spiritualist being our last pick, this will give us access to Exalted Priesthood and a lot of extra unity throughout the game. The monthly unity benefit, obviously nice, and the Edict upkeep and Edict cost will allow us to run more powerful Edicts. As well as the Temple building is a nice benefit compared to that of the Administrative Offices. Last two things looking at our species, we start with the Latent Psionic trait. This will net us extra research, effectively like taking the Intelligent trait, as well as just a small benefit to our unity production. Rapid Breeders, similar to Xenophobe, will net us some extra pops. And Traditional will just increase the amount of unity we get from our Priests. The last beneficial trait being Charismatic. I've chosen this over Intelligent, as with Charismatic and Priests, a lot of the times we don't even need to build any Hollow Theaters, and simply just having Charismatic Priests can uh, solve all of our amenity issues in the early to mid game. You can replace this with Intelligent if you're going for a little bit more of a tech focus, or maybe our playing in multiplayer. For the negative traits, we've taken Unruly and Sedentary. Unruly, you won't really ever notice it, and it's basically free. And Sedentary, you can replace this with any of your personal preference picks. I like Sedentary just because the pop growth from immigration doesn't really affect much, 
and the resettlement cost is very, very low. Lastly, looking at the Teachers of the Shroud, this will lock us into the Ascension Path for Psionics. That's fine, as we intend to be Psionic anyways, and gaining the latent Psionic trait at the start of the game is very, very powerful. Also, the uh, Teachers of the Shroud will allow us to get the fully Psionic Pops as early as year 9 to 10. Sometimes even earlier if you get lucky. So, jumping into year zero, we can see that we start with our origin screen here. Just press begin, and we start in contact with the Shroud Walker Enclave, as mentioned before. We will just receive this great gift with gratitude. And something it doesn't mention is to build the Shroud Beacon, we need crystals, so they give us 25 rare crystals at the start of the game. A strategic resource that will give us access to starting edicts that no other empire will have, so it's another hidden bonus to the Teachers of the Shroud. With gratitude, and zoom out and kind of look at our start. Sort of in the middle of these two rings, so we'll probably run into quite a few people. But looking at our uh, leader here, we can see here that we got Warlike, Space Miner, and Psychic. Psychic is nice, we'll get the extra influence at the start of the game. And Miner will give us a little bit of extra mining station output and reduce the build cost. Warlike won't come into play for a bit, but it's still useful. And we also got a new generation, which will increase our happiness and our pop growth speed. That's quite powerful. Moving down, we can change our policies. Going to Isolationist. As well as changing our civilian economy. Now, mentioned before in some of my other videos, Isolationist is good simply because we get extra unity and governing ethics attractions. As well as the... Downsides of border friction, diplomatic weight, and diplomatic influence cost won't come into play until we actually meet other people, in which case we can just change this. And the civilian economy will net us extra consumer goods, meaning we can run extra researchers and just jobs that require higher consumer goods uh, upkeep in the early game. Next we can move on to edicts. I would always recommend turning on Veneration of Saints and Information Quarantine. This one lets you extra stability, governing ethics attraction. Your priests will get 20% output, and you will get Spiritualist Ethics Attraction. So with these two, you will get quite a bit of Spiritualist Ethics Attraction and Governing Ethics, as well as just, in general, stability will mean just general job output. And Priest output is quite nice, paired with our uh, Exalted Priesthood. But also, we start with Crystal and Sensors. This will increase our sensor range by one. So that means when our science ships are out exploring, if we activate this during a month, but not letting it tick over, we will get extra information and you can just cancel it before the month ends and you won't lose any crystals. For society management and traditions, the only thing I like to mention is we'll go to technology first. And we'll choose our first text. Uh, let's grab some quantum theory. We'll grab some uh, zero G refineries. And you'll notice that whenever you start a game with Teachers of the Shroud, you will always have psionic theory available to you at the start. This is quite nice as we can complete this tech. And once we complete it, we will have access to the psychic or psionic ascension tradition tree. Normally, for other empires, you have to complete an Ascension perk, and then you gain access to the tree. But the whole benefit of Teachers of the Shroud, as shown here, is that we have the Ascension path for Psionic, and we start with Latent Psionic trait. So as soon as we complete this, we can go through the tree, and by around year 9 to 10, you should be fully done with the tree, moving on to your next one, and you will have fully Psychic Pops very, very early. So, uh, last thing to mention here is just that if you can, look for a leader, for example, with Psychic. That will increase the bonus by 20%, which is rather good. So we're going to want to pick up a Psychic leader as soon as possible. Uh, our governor, you can look for a different governor. Wow, okay. Uh, we'll probably grab Feathers of White, a very young unifier who's also Psychic. So we'll get 20% from those and then 20% from Veneration of Saints on top of all the other benefits we have. So we'll be uh, generating a lot of unity at the start of the game. Uh, last thing to mention, 
before we check back in on year five is just of course still build science ships explore around look for our starting worlds uh, we'll be looking for arid worlds or any other dry type worlds to expand to and just trying to find good choke points mega structures and eventually meeting some other ai but for now i will check back in at year five hello checking back in at year five everything is going basically according to plan uh, we were able to pick up that unifier psychic governor so as we can check here our priests are producing 10.5 unity each and 2.4 amenities. Rather nice. And we've also started filling out some of our research labs, and we'll be working on a new city district here in a second to get some more research labs. But speaking of research, we've been able to get some pretty good uh, scientists. We picked up a spark of genius psychic for our physics research, which will just help us go through this a bit quicker. We've also picked up a psychic uh, meticulous, not super useful, but we did pick up expertise biology. So that guy happened to random into that and only 63 months remaining on our psionic theory. Also managed to pick up an expertise engineer. This will help us get uh, the holographic cast tech a bit easier once we have our volatile moats and holographic casts will just allow us to produce a lot of alloys, meaning that we can attempt to rush down one of our neighbors with a lot of fleets. So overall, our tech is looking pretty good. I've not gotten our factions yet, but still a vast majority of our pops are spiritualist, which is nice. Uh, as you can see here, in terms of expanding, we can look over towards this choke point. Pretty good start over here. We've also managed to find some primitives, which are only eight of them, but we can just invade them and uh, set up some extra stuff there we have around four science ships out and about exploring right now and are on our way towards colonizing our first habitable world and our second habitable world we will be setting up here in a second getting our uh oops didn't mean to do construction ship we'll be getting our uh second egg carrier colony out here pretty soon just in fact we can get it out here in a couple of seconds uh probably buy some monthly consumer goods just because the uh, bulk price can be quite expensive. But as soon as we get that, we will start colonizing the second planet and working towards finding some neighbors and just continuing to expand. But I will check in around year 15 to give kind of a final update and a direction for where, where we might want to go with this build order. So, just want to do a quick update. Year 8, actually. Uh, it's not year 15, but... We were able to unlock psionics very, very early, year eight. So the entire tree is complete. We now have all of the benefits and can start delving into the shroud very, very early. Uh, this is thanks to just, you know, having some extra research speed uh, through the psychic benefit here. And then also having all of this extra unity from our psychic governor being a unifier, having a uh, meritocracy and exalted priesthood. We were able to, by year eight, have a full tradition set up and have enough to actually pick up prosperity as well. So just a quick check in, but you can get to fully awaken the psionic pops and have the tree completely done very, very early with this build. Hello, everybody. And a final check in here. You may notice it's year 20, not year 15. I decided to let it tick on to year 20 just because not much had actually changed uh, to year 15. There really hadn't been any significant developments, and sometimes that can happen. Uh, year 20, this time it just happened to have a lot more interesting stuff going on, so I decided to wait until then. Uh, just to kind of give a brief idea of where we are, we've managed to expand to quite a few planets, which is nice. Um, we also happen to have uh, all of this territory basically in like a nice choke point, since the Marauders are up to our north. We'll still want to get a uh, starbase here, just in case they awake and become the Great Khan, we can hopefully defeat them there. In terms of expansion, we'll just be focusing westward. We have uh, some planets that we can expand to as well, and we're on our way towards expanding towards this tomb world and this savannah world. Um, we can see we have both colony ships heading up that way. So we'll have three more planets up here within uh, this sector, and currently we have six planets within our capital sector. So... How do we get six so early? 
Well, we managed to find some primitives that have the uh, kind of tomb world setting. It's a little like role play event where you have these two planets filled with primitives that you can come to find. They basically destroyed each other and send each other back to the Stone Age. So finding them was very useful, adding us some extra population as well as some early expansion towards tomb worlds that we wouldn't normally have. In terms of our society management, we've managed to complete psionics and prosperity, picking up both technological ascendancy and one vision, assisting both of our tech, our unity, and reducing our pop amenity usage. In terms of our developments, uh, we're going through some tech uh, on our capital world, continuing to build city districts when we can, and filling those with, uh, research labs. Focusing as well on minerals, for now, just some general industry, as well as some industry here. We will eventually specialize these worlds, as you want to specialize all of your worlds. So, one will become alloys, one, one will become consumer goods. On the primitive worlds, for now, I'm just producing some energy and minerals. I'll probably change one of these, or both of these, into tech worlds, or an ecclesiastical center for priests. And then on this world, we haven't set up anything yet, but considering its size and the amount of industrial districts, we could produce another alloy world here, or an alloy uh, tech world as well. In terms of our tech, we've gotten moat harvesting traps, which is nice. We can complete this and look for uh, holographic casts so that we can increase our alloy production, as well as we've already gotten the ability to establish our rare crystal production. So we can grab that, and we have some Zro as well. In terms of where to go from here, we'll just keep expanding westward, eventually setting up a relatively strong military, hopefully uh, using our... I believe we already have destroyers, I haven't... Yeah, we've gotten destroyers and frigates. So we'll use some combination of uh, powerful fleet designs to hopefully be able to rush down our neighbor and gather some additional population from them. Now, when it comes to the psionically ascended, I would recommend, I'm just going to go over this really briefly, but I, I would recommend taking nihilistic acquisition or either your third or fourth. This will allow you to unlock the raiding bombardment stance in which we can steal population and return them to our worlds rather than just taking over their worlds. And this is beneficial in two ways. The first one being when you steal pops from a planet, it will reduce the amount of pops on the planet, obviously. Those pops will grow back quicker because they will have more planetary capacity. So basically you can use your neighbors as kind of like pop farms over the course of the game. The second one being that your worlds are better than the AI's worlds in terms of economic setup. But something to keep in mind is that the AI's economic benefits are significantly better than yours on Grand Admiral. So, to the AI, they might have a functioning economy on some of their worlds, but once you take them over and occupy them, you will be in crippling resource deficits that can take years to recover from and adjust slash pivot away from the AI's economy. So, nihilistic acquisition being one of the best ways for spiritualist empires and psionically ascended empires to produce extra pops, seeing that we will not have any uh, robotic pop assembly if we want to keep our spiritualist faction happy. As well, we will not have any biological pop assembly, seeing that we went down the psionic tree. So it is one of the better ways to net us some extra pops in the mid to late game. But thank you, I hope you've enjoyed the build. Uh, if you're interested in more Stellaris content, please like and subscribe and press the bell notification. I hope to have another video out tomorrow. Um, probably the next Covenant video will be out tomorrow. But thank you and have a blessed day.